All right, so we're going to uh, look and see if a series diverges or converges uh, using the integral test. Okay, so here's what it says. It says if f is positive, continuous, and decreasing for x greater than or equal to 1 and a sub n equals f of n, okay, then the series n goes from 1 to infinity a sub n is equal to the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx okay and either both converge or both diverge so basically what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to change the series into this integral here and we're going to determine if it diverges or converges okay by taking the limit I'm, I'm sorry, by, not by taking the limit, by integrating this, okay? And of course, if, if this integral goes to infinity, then it's going to diverge. And if this integral here actually equals a number, then it converges, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at our first one. We have summation n equals 1 to infinity of n over n squared plus 1. Okay, So what we're going to do is we're going to say f of x equals n over n squared plus 1. I'm sorry, not n, equals x over x squared plus 1. Okay. And you can see that a sub n, which is this, would equal f of n. See, if I replace the x's with an n, it would equal this. Okay. All right. So, what did what did it say that this this function here has to do? This f. Well, let's look back. It has to be positive, continuous, and decreasing. For x greater than or equal to 1. So we need to test and see if it fits those conditions. Okay, it has to be positive, continuous, and decreasing when x is greater than or equal to 1. So what we can do here, well, we can use the first derivative test, okay? All right, <clears throat> so, and, and the first derivative test will tell us if it's decreasing. Well, we know that it's going to be positive because the values are from 1 to infinity. So we're only plugging positive values in, and this is always going to be positive. All right, so let's go ahead and take the derivative. I have to use the quotient rule here hope you remember that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna explain the how we get the derivative you should know how to do the uh, quotient rule okay so that's gonna equal negative x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1 squared <coughs> All right, so we took the <clears throat> we took the first derivative, and then we got we have to find our critical numbers. So we set this equal to zero and solve. Okay, so this fraction is only going to be zero whenever the numerator is zero. So if I take negative x squared plus one, set it equal to zero, well that means that one is equal to x squared. So that means x is equal to plus or minus 1. And then we can plot that and determine where it increases and decreases. So I'll pick my test points. I'll pick negative 2, 0, and 2. So if I plug the negative 2 in, well, the numerator 
is going to be um, ne uh, negative and the denominator is going to be positive so that tells me that this thing is decreasing and then if I plug the zero in that's going to be a positive over a positive which is positive so that means it's increasing and then when I plug the two in that's going to be a negative up here and a positive down here so you can see it is decreasing from one to infinity alright so now and, and we can see that it is continuous from one to infinity also okay it's also continuous alright so now so it fits the it fits the conditions for the integral test so let me go ahead and erase all this All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit. No, I'm sorry, not the limit. We're going to take, we're going to integrate from one to infinity. Now I erase the f of x. F of x is equal to x over x squared plus one. So we're going to integrate that with respect to x. Okay. Now I'm not going to go over finding the antiderivative of this um, basically what you would have to do is use u substitution you would let u equal x squared plus 1 and so du would be 2x and then you could you can see that we need a 2 here so we would have to come out here and multiply by 1 half okay so when we integrate this, we're going to get one half times the limit as b goes to infinity of the natural log of x squared plus 1 and we're going to integrate that from 1 to b alright so we can rewrite this as let's see how about we rewrite it one half the limit as b goes to infinity of the natural log of x squared plus one from one to b okay. So that's going to give me one half times the limit as b goes to infinity. Now, when I do this in here, that's going to give me that's going to give me the natural log of b squared plus one minus the natural log of one squared plus one. And so, I mean, to do this, we're gonna, it'll just be one half the limit as b goes to infinity of uh, the natural log of b squared plus one minus one half the limit as b goes to infinity of the natural log of two. And you can see that this right here is natural, you know, this is just going to be one half times the natural log of two, which is a very small number. And so if we take the limit of this, you can see this, this thing right here is going to infinity because 
this term in here is increasing and increasing it's just getting larger and larger so this limit here is equal to infinity okay and since this limit equals infinity we would say that this series here diverges okay all right so I hope that videos helped uh, I'm going to do another example but I'm going to do it in, in a separate video so you can check that out uh, if you like the videos you can subscribe all right thanks